The HTC Vive has become such an important focus of the company's business that there are even rumors of a brand spin-off recently. But is the Vive truly worth a more dedicated focus? I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our review of the HTC Vive. Virtual reality is not just difficult to show off in a video review, but also a hard concept to explain for someone who's never tested the service. I've actually had to invite friends and family to test the Vive because everyone thinks that this is similar to a Samsung Gear VR and there's simply no room for comparison. For starters, the HTC Vive is a product designed from the ground up for VR. The words virtual reality literally define what the product should do, meaning that what you see virtually should also feel real. And after testing the Gear VR and even the Oculus Rift, I have to admit that HTC has figured this out a lot more than the others. For the experience to feel real, HTC has done a few things to make it more natural. The setup process alone is crazy as we detail in our unboxing video, but mounting sensors around the room allows you to naturally walk around and interact with the game. The Vive offers options for both walking around and remaining stationary if you don't have enough room as well. The controllers also play a key factor in this all feeling natural. They're wireless and extremely light, their battery lasts for days, and when playing these adopt different designs in order to hint of what you're doing. Whatever you need to walk beyond your play area, the trackpad serves to have you move around, and the trigger is self-explanatory. The headset is not the lightest in the world, but it houses sensors that interact with the base stations around you, and requires wires to provide you with the video and audio. These cables are all connected to the gorgeous Falcon Northwest Radeon Tiki that houses all the power needed for the experience to work without a stutter. Sadly, for 2016, you have to acknowledge that this comes with the territory if you want to do VR seriously. And uh, really, once you start playing, you simply forget that the headset is there, and the wires do a really good job at staying off your path. The camera at the front serves as your chaperone, which either displays a grid around you or allows you to see what's in front of you by raising the controller after you press the menu button. Playing with the Vive is simply awesome. I've had at least five people try it out with me, and none of them have ever commented over the wires or the heavy headset. No one really cared. The experience was so cool that all the talk was really about how immersive it was. HTC clearly did its homework for the Vive in making this a geek product. The lights on the headset when putting it on remind us of the moment when Darth Vader wore his mask for the first time. And then looking around the room when playing certain games reminds us of how Neo loads up his guns on the Matrix. It's those little things that make the experience so cool from start to finish. Yes, you can control what happens with the Vive through the PC's monitor, but you don't really need to. I sadly can't show this to you on video, but when you press the menu button, you can control your PC from the headset. Your controls become the mouse, allowing you to define audio, gameplay, and hey, if you want the full desktop experience on the Vive, you can do that too. And then the games. Oh boy, the games. This was the first experience I've ever had with Steam games, and I'll admit that I'm hooked. I haven't had this much fun since the old Super Nintendo games, or with computer games like Doom. I am a big fan of first-person shooters, and there are a few games here that are extremely addicting, like Space Pirate Trainer, for example, or The Lab. These games require you to move around, duck, turn around, and you simply feel like if you're in the game when you're playing around. The Lab in particular has a few games where you simply forget that you're holding a bow with your left hand and an arrow with the right hand, and there comes a point where you just continue shooting at your targets like if you're there, and the Vive does a tremendously great job at detecting where you're shooting, so it just continuously feels natural regardless of what you're doing in the game. Sadly, as with every review, not every product is perfect. What really deters from the experience of the Vive feeling natural is its resolution. It's not that bad for games, but it's not perfect either and feels kind of grainy, particularly in game menus. 
Another is that you can't adjust the lenses internally, but even so, the content tends to reflect on them at times, which does make your vision a little blurry. If you're not a fan of wires, this is definitely not the system for you as the base station, the wires on the headset, pretty much everything has to be connected at times. And probably the most annoying part of using the Vive is the whole process of setting it up. You have to clear the room first, which is not that easy if you live in New York. And then loading games takes a while, which shouldn't really be a problem if you're using a setup this expensive and powerful. And really, that's the biggest challenge about adopting something like the HTC Vive. At $700, which is the standard price of a flagship smartphone, I honestly don't find all this technology to be expensive at all. I find the Vive to be extremely affordable for everything you get. The problem is really the fact that the computer alone will cost you more than $1,000 if you want that GPU to be powerful enough to run it. And then there's the challenge of the games, which are all cool, but honestly not popular enough to drive people to want to buy a Vive to play them, as we see the Halo effect with game consoles like the Xbox. That being said, if this was my money, I would totally buy the Vive. This product has made me a believer in games again, and I love every second I play with it. I would even suggest that you go out and give it a try because showing you on video is really not enough. This is something you really need to experience for yourself. I'm Generation X, guys. I grew up playing with controllers and now I'm having a hard time going back to them. And that says a lot about how powerful the Vive can be when you give it a try. Folks, just like our review of the HTC Vive, we've got a ton of other content for smartphones, tablets, and wearables, so make sure you follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button down below for more videos like this one. In addition, you can also catch our videos on Vessel, vessel.com slash pocket now, and follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.